going on, people? Welcome to the Dual Shocker Shotcast, episode 168. I am your host, Tony Polanco, here with Ryan Meitzler. Hello. And George Jimenez. Happy April Fool's, a.k.a. Fake News Day. Yeah, the day where you have to navigate the internet like a minefield. Basically, the, my rule of thumb is, if the story sounds too good to be true, probably is. <laughs> this is just the way it is, man. And wait, wait, Half-Life 3 isn't coming out? No, oh, it's no. not. <laughs> Oh, God, oh my God! How many of those posts did we see today? It, it, even um, what's his face, Boogie Nine Thousand? You know, Frank, you know, Francis. He did. I'm like, come on, dude, really? A Half Life Three? Everyone and their mothers doing that shit. It's been happening. How many years have they been doing this now? It's insane, man. Okay, and always go Half Life Three. What about Half Life Two Episode Three? Why don't you do that instead? That shouldn't that be the next thing that comes out? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, no, but there there were some good ones. I I kind of like you know. I like a lot of these big companies. This is, I think, this is the most fun they have all year. And it's like, let's just do something dumb and just take our mind off development. Just do something silly, like the. Uh, I like that Optimus Prime DLC. For, oh, yeah, for Titanfall. Yeah. That was great. I was like, I sit there, I'm like, you know, this could probably be real DLC. Like, I don't see why not. Yeah, I and saw that, one. Yeah, go ahead. That was one of those things I saw. Where I was like, that you know, if that was real, I actually wouldn't mind it. Be I paid three ninety nine so. for that for yeah. uh, Optimus skin. <laughs> like, fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> Oh man, I saw one, and because this thing starts the day before April Fools' now, I saw one. Um, Steven Seagal defected to Russia because he sides with them over the Crimean bullshit. It was like, really? But Steven Seagal is crazy enough to actually do that. So I don't know if that was real or not. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get those that are sort of fake. Like I did the Skullgirls one, where uh, they did a new character, which was they just palette swap. They, they, you know, they yeah. were making fun of uh, Ultra Street Fighter's newest character. Uh, what's her name? DiCaprio. Which yeah. is actually, it's Kami with a face mask. Yeah. So they, one with you know Philia and her name's Fukia, but they, you can actually play as her. Like if you go and load up your Skullgirls Encore, you can play as Fukia, and that's an entirely new character. And they're like, yeah, you know, if the community likes it, we'll keep it in there. But you know, it's kind of a joke. No, that's pretty like, cool. Well, do do I classify this as an April Fool's joke or actual news? Because you can actually play. Uh, and it, it gave me a headache, so I just threw, just closed my eyes and went to bed. Yeah. There you go. Ryan, what about you? What was the best thing you saw today? Um, the Optimus Prime was really good. I think my favorite's been the Google, um, the Pokemon uh, iOS and Android thing I talked about. Um, that was just really fun, just because I, I went on the Android app and saw like, a couple Pokemon floating around in the world, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty sweet. I, so that was probably my favorite. So, Is it an April Fool's if it's actually functional, though? The, you know, George, it's kind of what you were talking about. It, it doesn't matter. It's I think, just I think awesome, man. It's great. It's awesome, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 whether it's functional or not, I think it's just fun, so... So you didn't yeah. like the uh, the Nestor joins uh, Super Smash Brothers? Oh, I did. I saw that one briefly. That one was fun too. Yeah, I totally skipped out of that. I was out today doing stuff. I'm like, I'm glad I wasn't on the internet because to me, as a news guy, it, it's very tough. Like, is this news? Is that news? Like, ah, it's just I think it's just right with the little disclaimer, like this may not be true, but here, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I I would buy a Garrus Vicarian body pillow. Oh my God! Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I I totally would too. <laughs> and there's some Garrus. and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these things turn out to be like real, uh, you know. Turn out to be real later on, just from fan reaction. Or Jorge can act out his Mass Effect fantasies with uh, his body pillow. <laughs> I'm just saying, Garrus would have been happy with me, not uh, Tali. Just <laughs> stay at that. Tali, come on, she's gotta get that uh, that romance achievement, you know. <laughs> oh God, sex everyone. <laughs> I'm I'm just thinking about some really dirty stuff right now, <laughs> like like Garrus. What about some other Mass Effect people? You know, no, Garrus. Wanna... That's all I want. That's all, right, just... going to... <laughs> it's all you need. Angel, come on. What the fuck's wrong with you people? How about a Volus? You know, that'd be. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into the new game releases. Who wants to do this? Dude, should I do it this week? Go for it, Tom. Yeah, you know what? I'll go for it. So it's just gonna loads. Da, 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 da. I should have had this loaded up beforehand. Right, uh, what week are we? Yeah, April first. So there you go. And this is not the list of every game ever released. Come on, goddammit! Oh, oh. my my, my okay. other favorite one before I forget. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. Octodad, deadliest catch, the multi dad announcement, where it's <laughs> what? thirty-two people pretending to be Octodad, so it's just thirty-two octopuses just going all. <laughs> like that. That's funny. Like that's <laughs> a real thing. Like, oh, it's so frustrating. That's fine. All right, this is so um, for the week of March 30th to April 6th, we got Box Bloatings uh, for Brow <laughs> and Ouya. The Ouya? Okay. Still a thing. 
Yeah, still a there, thing. There, there are games out for it. Yeah, uh, Age of Wonders 3 for the PC, uh, Steins Gate Limited Edition for PC, and Download Edition. That's an anime I need to check out. I hear that's really good. I gotta check that one out. Um, indie games, what is Space Whip? There's a game called Space Whip that's coming out for XBGS. What the hell is that? Xbox Game Store. We do this every time. <laughs> every time we say that, you're like, what the fuck is XB? I'm like, it's Xbox Game Store. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, they have some really weird abbreviations in here, so. Yeah. Um, MLB 14, the show, uh, baseball season for you baseball people. There you go. Check that out. The best um, and only baseball game on consoles. Yeah, that's coming out for PS3. consoles. I just mean PlayStation. Consoles. Yeah, that's coming out. Yeah, pretty much every PlayStation console on your son. Uh, Speaking about every PlayStation. Wait, is that? P- no, I don't see it for PS4 though. PS3. PS4 you know. is in uh, two weeks. Okay. Uh, Rag- Ragnarok Odyssey Ace for PS3. Uh, PS Vita. Um, whatever. I-, I I played the demo. That I wasn't a fan. Uh, Arkham Origins Blackgate. Uh, for the Wii U. XBGS. <laughs> uh, PS3 and PC. Um, that's the that was the handheld one, right? Yeah, that was on the Vita and the 3DS. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, pretty good. Uh, I I saw a little bit at Comic Con. I, I don't mind. I mean, I I don't own a handheld, so there was nowhere I was gonna play this game until now. So I might actually give it a shot. Yeah, I've heard that it's actually better than Origins, which is interesting. All right, uh, King Oddball for the PS4. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Double Summoner. Wow, that's a long fucking title. I'm not reading all of that. That's coming out for... <laughs> yeah, I should. Okay. Shin Megami Tensei Double Summoner Raidu Kazu Noha versus the Soulless Army. PS2 Classic. Uh, <laughs> I did that was, it. That was the one, because um, I remember I was still I was still managing a GameStop. That was the one that came with the plush uh, Jack Frost doll. Oh, man. It was the only way you can get it. It was like one of those first runs where it was like all the... All the yeah, you just had this amazing... Jack Frost Plosh and was up for me. Okay, yeah, uh, this is uh, <laughs> the the Reddit darling right here, Goat Simulator. This game is insane. I saw that trailer, I'm like, what am I watching? They're doing like a parody of Dead Island. That was genius. Oh yeah, that was another one, the goat mode for the Dead Island MOBA. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So Goat Simulator for the PCs out today. That's... There's always that game that kind of like just everyone just ironically loves, and Goat Simulator is the one this year. Yeah, because I, 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 cause I go to Reddit for some news, and I'm like, everything's about Goat Simulator now. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. Uh, Fright Fight uh, for the Ouya. I, I'm looking at this picture. I'm like, Fright Night, the movie from the 80s? No. <laughs> um, that got remade, too, I think. Uh, Boot Hill Heroes uh, PSM for the PSM. Cool. What is that? That looks like a little JRPG thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, there's a lot of games out. Uh, Rusty's uh, Real Deal Baseball. No, that's the best baseball game right there, man. <laughs> this is a free-to-play with microtransactions, but you can haggle the microtransaction prices with Rusty, or whoever the pig guy who sells you stuff is. Oh, so the power-ups, you can actually get a stat that makes you better at haggling. So if something costs $3 in real money, you can talk them down to like $8. That's insane. Yeah. Look, look, <laughs> look, we all know that the best baseball game, Backyard Baseball. I'm just going to throw it out there. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. I put, up a, I put up that video of some guy recorded all the start screens to like every Super Nintendo game ever made. And the very first video was Super Baseball 2020, i.e. the greatest game, greatest sports game, greatest sci-fi game, greatest game featuring robots and people ever made. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Based oh, on that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's for the 3DS. Uh, we got Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga for the Wii U. Uh, Metroid Fusion. Metroid Fusion for the Wii U. That's is that an it's old not, game? It's in yeah, it's an eShop game. Okay. Uh, Advance Wars. That's another one. Wii U. Monkey Ball 3D. Super Monkey Ball 3D for the 3DS. And last, <laughs> Monkey Ball. <laughs> that's what it's called, people. Uh, and then the Elder Scrolls Online for the PC and Mac. And that's that's everything. What are you picking out of that? That's a, that was a lot of games. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna, before before Jorge can pick it, I'm gonna take Goat Simulator because it looks really really ridiculous, and I want to try it out. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I I love the bats, so I will I'll, I will try Batman. That's probably hmm. a game I'll actually end up you know purchasing, seeing how it rolls. You guys kind of picked the two games I was gonna pick, so. Well, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Gold Simulator because that trailer made me laugh. It was just so much fun. 
It was funny as I was watching that launch trailer because I was like, for, it took me like a good thirty to forty-five seconds to realize it was Dead Island, and I was like, I was like, wait, oh, this is Dead Island. <laughs> I started enjoying it a lot more. So yeah, I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? This is crazy. I actually didn't know it was Dead Island until one of the readers said so. I'm like, oh yeah, that trailer. So yeah, so this week, I mean, you know, not too much stuff happened. So I'm like, let me just make up a random topic off the top of my head. I want to know how each of us got into video games. I think that would be kind of fun. You know, let, let's keep it positive. Uh, Ryan, how did you get started playing video games? Well, it all started a long time ago when I was... No, I'm kidding. The galaxy um, far, but far away. Yeah. yeah. Um, but actually, yeah, that that is actually pretty much how it started. Because um, I... Yeah, when I was younger, like, probably around, like, four or so, my, we had... Uh, at home, we had an NES, and we had a Sega Master System. So I had the best of both worlds back then. Um, and that was pretty much about it, um, you know, because I just played those constantly. And then pretty much ever since then, I've owned, like, at least one console from every generation I could think of, pretty much. Um, especially Nintendo. I was a big Nintendo kid. And uh, except uh, I never had a, a Super Nintendo. I only I had a Genesis. So I was a Genesis kid. I'm sorry. So You, you don't know. have to be sorry. Genesis was yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> It, it, yeah, it's just one of those things that started when I was a kid, and that's kind of just been with me my whole life, pretty much. So that's, yeah, that, that's about it. So I don't really have anything else. All right, we'll get more into it. Uh, George, what about you? How did you get started? Yeah. Eons ago. <laughs> oh, boy. In the tiny town of North Bergen, New Jersey. Good place there. to be. <laughs> Who was terrified of arcades. Because <laughs> I was actually a big arcade kid growing up. So yeah. I didn't really have a console until... Uh, uh, I, I want to say like 10 or 11, I didn't own a console, but my, my parents were foolish enough to like leave me in arcades as like, you know, just, we don't need babysitters, we'll just leave you in this place where people smoke. We'll just leave you in hot. this dark place. And, <laughs> so, and the thing is, I, they would send me there and then just give me no money, so it just spent a lot of my time just watching people play video games and like oh, each other. Now, I've, now seen dudes, I've seen dudes get into fist fights playing Street Fighter, like, afterwards, because the guy's like, you kept doing a sonic boom, you fucking suck, and he punched Jorge, me. Jorge, are we talking, like, genuine arcades, or are we talking, like, Chuck E. No, Cheese, Chuck no, e. Cheese no, arcades? Like, real <laughs> arcade. That one called a Big Mouth Arcade that got shut down when I was kind of old enough to, like, appreciate an arcade, where it's like, I, I have money, I can go spend, and by the time I was ready to go, they were, they were gone. Oh, man. But, but if we start going console-wise, I think my parents got me a Sega Genesis. It was a bundle with Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one. And I think I got it for having good grades on a marking period. And I remember just nagging them. I was like, what's it going to take to get me one of these? Come on. <laughs> Loosen up the purse, uh, the purse strings and, you know, pay $300 for this console. And they were like, ugh, fine, get an A. And I was like, got an A. And I'm like, ugh, you're smart all of a sudden? What the fuck's wrong with you? You're like, hey, I want that console. Let me get yeah. that A. <laughs> yeah, so I, I remember going to the Babbage's and I was like, I want that one. Because back then, those Sega Genesis commercials were fucking awesome. Yes. Sega I think it was the extreme system, like, you know, the Super Nintendo was for, like, kitties, and Sonic's a dork, but Sonic runs, uh, no, uh, Mario's a dork, but Sonic runs really fast, and the guy yelled Sega, and he yelled at you all the time, and that was that was it. I, I was really, I, I think the more of the marketing, like, the edginess of the Genesis. It's all about that blast processing, man. <laughs> oh, man. Back in the day. Oh, gross. And then I think from there I was just a uh, I was a Sega console guy, and I was into I was into whatever Sega was offering. So yeah, we did the Master System, the 32X. I did the Saturn. The oh, you did that. You did the 32X. I feel sorry for you. I was all in. My my thing looked like some freaky Voltron of just failure. Yes. <laughs> and, and you remember because then when you put the 32X into the Genesis, you can put you could it was backwards the compatible. CD, yeah. Still, so you could still plug the thing in, but if you had a, I think was it Sonic and Knuckles where it had the little flip top where you mm-hmm. could put another game inside of Sonic and Knuckles. And yeah, then Sonic put, Three. Yeah, and then you could put Knuckles in Sonic Two or Three, and you're yeah, like, Three, it was Three, amazing. yeah. And then before you know it, this thing just looked like it was just assimilating your entertainment center. And then I had it in a little cupboard, and I couldn't fit it anymore because I only had this much space. <laughs> that's, up. that's that's one of those things with older consoles I really miss are those wacky like accessories and attachments, like especially like N sixty four. Like I had a lot of those, like with, you know, like and that was like one of my Rumble favorite pack. things. Was, like, Rumble packs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, packs. my favorite was for Pokemon Stadium with the uh, the GBA uh, cartridge thing, so you could put your Pokemon in and everything. Like that. That's one of those things I miss was having like an N sixty four controller that just had these big giant plastic things. 
things hanging never, out of it all the time. Never had everything. That's always I felt like you always had to go back to the store. It's like, oh fuck, I'm missing this cable. Yeah, or, yeah. I, I didn't I need this I didn't, adapter for my GBA link, and oh, I was. Yeah, I didn't have a memory pack for my N64, so a lot of my games when I was younger, like I just had to restart from the beginning every time. Oh <laughs> and, like, man, because I didn't have a memory pack like for my entire run of having N64. So like, I had like Rayman 2, and I had to restart it from the beginning every time I played it. But I didn't mind because I loved that game. So. That's brutal. All right, let's get to my. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. that the most heartbreaking thing you had to do when memory cards first became a thing? Oh, and like, yeah. You had your PS1 memory card that only had 16 blocks. So when there came a time where it's like, I have to delete some things. I can't. Uh, do and it. then you had you had the games like Final Fantasies and stuff like that that took up like multiple blocks, like rather than just one. So it's like you know, take you know, up like over ninety hours of gameplay on it. I'm like, I'm not losing this. This is like, <laughs> yeah, that's when you had to go out and buy another memory card. That, there was no way I was going to sacrifice that stuff. You know, that save file was your trophy. It was an early day achievement. It yep. was like, no, people. Look, I was level ninety nine. Look, look, this is evidence right here. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But then you couldn't play a game like Kingsfield that would take up your whole fucking memory card. So I never played Kingsfield just for that reason, where I was like, I'm not deleting anything. Fuck you, Kingsfield. Yeah, dude, my, my memory card collection looked like dominoes. It was just <laughs> ridiculous. But um, the way I got into it was, okay, because when I was a kid, I was born in Dominican Republic, right? I didn't even know what the hell a video game was. So yeah. when I came to America and my cousins had this Nintendo, <laughs> you know, I was like, what's that? You can do stuff on the TV? That's crazy. Um, one of the first games I played was Contra. I'm like, this is <laughs> awesome. Uh, this was back in like the late '80s too, and then like um, you know arcades. Um, my I used to live near a, a bodega, right? And they had Gauntlet, not not Gauntlet, um, Golden Axe, Golden yep. Axe two specifically. Wow. I played that like crazy because the owner was French. He was drinking buddies with my dad, so he just kept giving me quarters. I just played all fucking day. Um, yeah, so I had an NES first, then I got a Game Boy Tetris. I was I was so obsessed with that game. And it's sad because when I let my 10-year-old nephew play Tetris, he was like, this is stupid. When I was 10, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't stop playing this game. It's so awesome. Yeah, but you uh, see, his, his version of a Tetris now would be like a match three game, like Candy Crush or... Like threes or something like that. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. Or like threes. threes is a great game, by the way. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you don't appreciate the, the green colors of the Game Boy, God damn you. Yeah. This is awesome. No, good, good. I, like, I, 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 I respect someone's love of the retro, but... Yeah. There is kind of like an act of denial of how shitty those things look. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, I for 16, but I'm like, look, that's fucking hideous. I mean, look, you you live in an age of HD. It's it's totally okay to like HD. You're not you're not selling out. It's just it's the, fine. The, 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 te the Tetris thing is actually funny because my grandpa he still has the original Game Boy that I had. Uh, so he has it at home and he still has Tetris and he's just like a grandmaster of Tetris. He's just that's awesome. He is a genius. I'm pretty sure I'm convinced he's the only person that probably beat Tetris and because like, he's just he's so good at that game. So. Yeah, and George, just like you, I had the Sega Tower, man. I had all that stuff. Sega was my... But the thing is, I actually did own the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, um, so that was a lot of fun. I, I used to go more for the Super Nintendo games because they just looked better. I was a graphic whore back then. But... <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> Just five bits more than the other one. It's like, yeah, I was like, they have 256 colors versus 64. I like that system better. Um, funny, funny how things have changed now. Mr. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, and like you, yeah, we talk about like the console wars, and it's funny because you know you would get into these schoolyard arguments, which is so oh, funny yeah. when you hear people yelling at each other in forums who are like. You guys are adults. And you probably it's, 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 both systems. This is weird. It's and the same it's, thing. It's yeah, just maybe maybe we just like <laughs> maybe we just love having the schoolyard argument. Yeah, but th there's a difference though. You used to have these arguments in the schoolyard. Then you go to your friend's house, play the rival system, and you would forget about it. You just play the game. Yeah, you don't I, have, you I don't, love that doesn't happen anymore. I love that one of my best friends had a Super Nintendo because I would just come over and play and be like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" Like I didn't actually own a Super Nintendo till I was like well into high school. Yeah. And like I said, that generation was over, so I was like, man, I've got literally hundreds of Super Nintendo games I can play that I've never touched before. Yeah, that was the same thing, like, um, back with the, the PlayStation and the N64, because, like, at the time, I just had a PlayStation. Um, I didn't have an N64 yet, but one of my neighbors had an N64. So I would just, like, after school, just, like, just wait, like, until he got home so that way I could, like, you know, go over <laughs> and we could play, like, we'd play Smash Brothers, and we'd just play that, like, nonstop pretty much, so... That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, that's what you have to do. It's like because my friend um, Manny, he had a 3DO. I don't know if you guys remember the 3DO. I uh, do remember 3DO. Uh, I saw I saw a 3DO in a appliance store, and even as a kid, I'm like, no one's gonna buy this. <laughs> yeah. Well, my friend's mom bought him a 3DO, and that had the best version of Super Street Fighter 2 out there. I was great. 
that was the Jaguar, right? The 3DO was Jaguar. No, right? no, no, yeah, no. Jaguar, there was Dark... a 3DO, and then there was 3D, and there was Jaguar, two separate systems. Okay, and like I, you know, there was one system I always wanted to buy, and that was the Neo Geo. But, yeah, but that was an arm and a leg too. Shit. Well, that was yeah, that was way ahead of its time, and it was so and it was priced so poorly. Like, hey, your Neo Geo can only it's only sixteen hundred dollars, and the games are two hundred dollars. I'm like, these people are maniacs. Yeah, you know why <laughs> they cost that much, right? Because you were actually getting the arcade chips and all that other stuff in there. It was like it wasn't just ported. It was the same fucking thing at the arcade. So yeah, they, that, I remember. They, yeah, they had no idea what they were doing because they were like, oh, we can just put these arcade cabinets and there you go. And it's like, no, you idiot, you have to make this more commercial friendly. Like. Yeah. Who's gonna buy this? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember like I wanted Neo Geo because I was a big fighting game fan back in the '90s. So I was like, oh, I wanted that. But I spent a lot of time in the arcades, man. Like, there's a bowling alley around here called Jib Lanes. I used to go there all the time, play games and stuff. Um, yeah, I so, feel for you. Same, you know, when you grew up in Dominican Republic, because um, I had an aunt who lived in Dominican Republic. And she, you know, she kind of she was like an importer exporter. She would just buy a bunch of stuff up here for cheap and sell it at a markup. Or she'd fly to Hong Kong and buy. You know, like furniture that it costs like you know three dollars, and so like, ooh, look at this fancy chair, three hundred dollars, and like the rich yuppies would be like, oh, super fancy, we'll buy it. But yeah, she would she would come up here, and I remember I would love every time she visited because she would ask me, it's like, I need to get three copies of whatever video games are hot, and I was like, okay, <laughs> good, and then she'd kind of be like, all right, you can pick like two of them, and I would just like mine, mine, but uh, but yeah, and then she would go, so she'd buy a game up here, say the MSRP was like. Because back then there was no, there was no MSRP actually. No, there so wasn't. There wasn't. Costs, they can charge whatever the fuck they wanted. Yep. So, you know, most N64 games were like seventy-five bucks. Yeah, you know, they were really. I remember that. So yeah. she was like, "Well, we're not getting N64 games." <laughs> I, think, uh, I think PlayStation ones were a little bit more. Uh, I think they were a little more cost friendly. So like, they were always kind of teetering like the forty to sixty dollar range. Yeah. Well, that was also because cartridges cost more to That's true, produce yeah. rather than CDs. So. So. Yeah. She, yeah. So she'd get a bunch of them, and then literally sell these $40 games for like $120 translated to whatever the pesos amount, because their currency's all fucked right now, so it could be anything. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, it'd be like 1,000 pesos, and, and you'd be like, hey, you know, and the only people who would buy this stuff would be just like the super rich yuppies from, you know, who are, you know, foreign diplomats or drug dealers would be the only people buying video games down there, because they were so expensive. Yeah, it was, it's funny, because people complain about, um, you know, the prices of video games down there. Like, that's how much I used to pay for games back in the day. You're right. Cartridges are really expensive. And I never even owned an S64, but just the Super Nintendo games alone were really yeah. expensive. Yeah, I mean, I still remember. I think, like, Conker's Bad Fur Day on 64 was, like, one of my favorite games. That was, like, $90, I think, for a cartridge or 80 It was, like, around there. It was it was really expensive. Did, did <laughs> Superman cost that much by any chance? It was, like, $80. <laughs> Imagine paying $80 for the Superman game. I, never, I remember my mom saying no to me because it was so expensive. Like, I think we went to, like, a Funko Land. I was like, I don't want to try that Superman game. And it was brand new. They didn't have any used copies. And I was like, you are fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> she, I think that was a good call on her part. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah she, yeah, she did you right, man. Um, <laughs> but you're right about that. Uh, back in those days, I used to go to this store called CPS Games. They used to sell games pretty cheap, and they had import games, too. So that's how I got to play a lot of these games. And that was the first time I saw Resident Evil. The first one, I'm like, what is that? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember seeing Biohazard at, at, an, at an import shop, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and then the guy was like, oh, it maybe might come out in the U.S. They're going to change the name or something. It's something stupid. And I'm like, well, Resident Evil is a stupid name. Like, I, Biohazard sounds like a fucking badass name. Like, yeah. I did actually, I did, yeah, I had good memories of the original Resident Evil. My friend had uh, Sega Saturn, and he played Resident Evil on there. And yeah, so did I. <laughs> so did back, I. Yeah, back then, like, I... I did not like scary games as a young kid, so I'd like sit there watching him playing it, but being like this, like through the corners of my <laughs> eyes watching him. And then as a zombie would come, I would just be like, no, 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 I can't. Well, you remember like, that was the game where every load screen was a door opening. Yeah, yeah it was the like, creepiest thing. Like, like, like you're like fuck, and you're just like you, you just like your butthole clenched just a bit, and you're like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was right there with him when the dogs jumped through the window, and oh we were just like we yeah. just screamed like hysterically. <laughs> it was great. And then there was a part I think he was getting like attacked by the the birds at one point in the level, and I was just like, oh god, I can't, I can't. I just, I can't. These birds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you couldn't get the rocket launcher from Forrest's body. And I was like, yeah. how did a dude with a rocket launcher lose to, oh no, the grenade launcher. I'm like, how did the a dude with a grenade launcher lose to birds? Like, <laughs> like out, of, out of all the things this, that's inhabiting this match, he got killed by crows that you can literally scare away by going like this. Yeah. <laughs> he had a grenade launcher. He could have just, just shot one in the distance and it would have flew away, but... 
I don't, I don't know. But I, just, like, I always wondered, like, those kind of, like, the dead team members and just, like, oh, the one guy got chewed up by zombies. He's, maybe he's never seen a zombie before, so he freaked out, and then they ate him. But it's just, like, birds, dude, like, come on. Like, yeah, dude, birds, like, what's wrong? By a giant snake? Like, you know what? If there was a giant snake in the room, it'd probably eat me. Like, I don't <laughs> But I'm, like, yeah. these trained soldiers, and I'm, like, come on. I'm pretty sure a trained soldier knows what to do. Yeah, speaking about rocket launchers and crazy peripherals, you guys remember the Super Scope 6 for the Super Nintendo? It looked like a crazy yep. grenade launcher. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't big on that kind of stuff. I, I, I remember when, like, Time Crisis first came out, I hated the idea of, like, no, this needs to be in our... I was, I was really advocate about this. This needs to be in an arcade. Doesn't... Doesn't do the same experience. Jorge sounds like a power glove person, so... <laughs> so. I had one of those. <laughs> And uh, my friend had uh, one of the, you know, the mats. Remember the the, the mat for um, tracking field or something like that? Yeah, 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 ABAB. Or or if you're smart, you could just sit there and just go like this. Yeah. <laughs> Tom the shit out of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, those were fun days, man. Like, I, there's still a part of me that misses that stuff, like when you first got into games and stuff. And back then, I mean, you know, if you played RPGs, they had stories and stuff. But, you know, it was more about the actual experience of just playing this crazy game. It wasn't all about all this other stuff, you know. I, I kind of miss that. yeah. So yeah, this definitely. Was before, this was before how, like, you know, imagine when you're a kid and you're playing this for some, these were the best games were going to look. And you're just like, that's the fucking Ninja Turtle. I know what those little, those five scores, I go, that's a Ninja Turtle. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> blew your mind. It's kind of like when, like, you know, when, like, the Myst games first came out on PC. People were like, guys, full motion video is the future. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Putting actors uh, in your games is what they want. I mean, that was in Resident Evil also with that intro. Yeah, uh, really. that, that you know, intro. Like, it just, like, whiskered, he, like, lit a cigarette. And, uh, that's, that, that's, like, one of the best things to watch now is that that intro for the original Resident Evil. It's it's amazing. Yeah, because it was just the intro of, like, <laughs> it's, the, it's not, the, voice, the voices aren't even synced properly. It's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's so bad to watch now, but... Yeah, full motion video, man. Remember, that was all of the Sega CD games, a lot of them. You know, it's like Sewer Shark and Night Trap, all that other crazy. I'm like, what the hell are these guys doing? Dracula, yeah, all yeah. that stuff, man. <laughs> it was nuts. But, yeah, it, it was good times, good times. So now I want to talk about some of the original shit we posted here. Uh, we actually had an interview with some guy, some industry guy, you know, that might be kind of popular, uh, <laughs> Mr. Michael Pactor. I actually didn't get to hear this. Uh, I George, I know you heard it. You oh yeah, that? I was I, I I was at work and it was a great great hour. Regardless of what you think about Michael Pactor and whether you agree with him or disagree with him, he's a great interview because he literally just he gives no fucks. Like he just he will curse left and right. He was like, I think Sony's out of their fucking mind. Like blah blah blah. I was like, yes, like that's what I want to hear. Like those are the sound bites you just you beg for when you're interviewing someone because um. You know, when you go to like these press events, people are like, you know, they've got some PR training and you know, well, media training they call it and. They know exactly how to answer a question. They kind of stick to a script, and they make sure it's like, all right, I know not to reveal this much, uh, but since he's not really a part of any software company, he's more of like, he's an analyst, so his, his yeah. job is to look at the industry and make, you know, educated guesses or just well-informed decisions to people who might be interested in investing. So, like, say there's a millionaire who says, I want to invest some money into one of these video game publishers. Who's good? And he says, like, well, here's who's performing, here's who's not performing. These people have great games coming out that might do well. These people have great games coming out that won't sell. And, you know, I, I, you know, and I think he's got a good track record. And in the interview, he kind of addressed that he's, he's right more often than he's wrong, but he's got, he has the type of job where when you're wrong, people are going to let you know and keep reminding you that you were wrong that one time. Which, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense whenever you, you do anything that expresses an opinion. Like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure once we, you know, we, we've written other gre well, we've written reviews that people don't agree with. And oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll let you know when they disagree with you. But well, that's one thing I, mean, I like. Yeah, yeah whenever he agrees with you, they let you go. They're like, oh, great. And, you know, they don't care. It doesn't even register. It's like, of course you got to. Duh. Like, but. I mean, Jorge gave Titanfall a nine. I mean, come on, guys. Uh, like, you know? I'm, <laughs> I'm a monster, okay? Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that there was going to be Optimus Prime DLC coming out. <laughs> then you would have given it a 10. <laughs> if that was a day one thing, 10, right off the bat. That was hilarious. It goes back to my infamous review. Like, oh, of course they gave it a high grade. Look at the name of the site. It's like, we gave Titanfall a 9. Um, but yeah, um, Michael Patrick, he's one of those guys, man. Like, I like him as a person because you're right. He did, you can tell he doesn't have any kind of media training, which is great because he just says whatever he wants, but... Yeah, so some of the things he says kind of irk me. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to say anymore, but I want to thank him, obviously, for doing an interview with us. You should and really, you really listen to the interview. Because oh, yeah, I, I plan to. I told you some you. great insider info because some people were asking about, like, um, one big question that came up because, you know, the, the Xbox One 
you, there's some, some price break somewhere at some retailer's yeah. price break. So, you know, people are like, Microsoft is doomed. They dropped the price, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, no, Microsoft didn't drop these prices. These are retailers just trying to get mm. rid of, and, you know, people trying to get rid of inventory or this is something they work out with Microsoft ahead of time where it's like, hey, we want to do a thing. That's why Walmart did their own promo on something and that's why another store would do something. And he, and he was saying like, you know, and they do these bundles at a loss. This is just to get people in. And, like, and I thought that was maybe the most poignant thing about there and something we don't really know about, like, channel distribution and just merchandising in general, where he's like, these retailers are only making about $30 profit on a next wow. year. Like, he says, Microsoft is probably playing, you know, paying, like, $470 for the Xbox One and turning around. So when they're selling it at $450, they are taking a loss. But the idea is, hey, look, you just say $50 on a console, maybe you'll pick up another game, maybe a controller, maybe two. So he says yeah. a lot of these bundles aren't, it's not Microsoft or Sony, it's like, yo, we are fucked, you have to drop these prices, man, we are in trouble. It's like, no, it's the retailer saying, like, what can we do to get more people in here? And yeah, I mean, like, it, that, that shined a light on maybe the retail aspect of thing, and maybe just kind of, like, brought down that kind of fanboy argument of things, it was like, oh, they price, the price dropped, that means they're ruined, no more Xbox in a year, and I'm like, I don't know why that would be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, go ahead. No, I was just going to say what Jorge was saying and how, like, you know, just the hardware in general, like, you don't really make, even if you do sell really well, you don't make that much of a profit just because of costs of producing it. So, you know, it really comes down to the games and, and you know, the what you know what software you're offering. So, I thought it was pretty obvious that it was just retailers doing this. I don't know why people got so crazy. You, I'm not surprised they got yeah, crazy, but I'm like, why? You'd, you'd be surprised how, like, short-sighted some people are or just, you know, how they're just not aware of it. They, yeah. you know, it's, it's, they, they see very, things as just a very, like, oh, well, this is not selling well. Guess it's Microsoft's fault. But here's the way I see it. It's like, okay, Walmart lowers the price, right? Then Best Buy is like, hey, let's lower the price. Walmart did it. Then Amazon's like, they, those two did it. Let's do it, too. That makes logical sense to me. That's not, like... It's a, getting a crisis, people, you know? It's getting people in the store. They, you know, they say yeah. like, oh, man, a lot of people are buying this fucking Xbox thing at a cheaper price. I guess we should do the same thing. Yeah, it just makes sense. And you're right. They have the system in the house. What are they going to do next? They're going to buy some games. That's business, you know. I, I, I don't get. Well, actually, yes. Yeah, I mean, I work the retail. That's not that. That doesn't sound too surprising. But yeah, a lot of people were acting as if this was like you know groundbreaking news. I'm like, no. You make money on software. You... <laughs> Shit. Yeah, exactly. That's how it works, man. <laughs> I don't get it. It's just you're right. It's just getting crazy with the internet. It's like, come on, you guys, seriously. Um, all right, we had a couple of reviews up. I finally reviewed Eska and Loki. I got this game a while ago, but Infamous and Metal Gear take precedent. I never played any of these games. Um, I thought it was kind of fun. It, it it got better as I kept playing it. I don't know if I would return to the series unless I have to review it again. But you know, it was good for what it was. I, I you know I. I I like it when you say uh, the Altair. Al Altair. Yeah, the uh, um, Altair. There we go. That's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, Atelier. That's what they call it in the game. Like, oh, that's how you pronounce. It. Thank you. Esther and Lodgy. Okay, that's how you say it. Okay. I, I, I remember assigning these games to like you know our an in-house JRPG person. He was like, I love JRPG. I'm like, good, because you're gonna get all this fucking shit that they're gonna mm -hmm. send us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get too much shit because um Chad Chad Ackerman uh he reviewed the last four games in the series. They give them really high scores, um, like 8.5, 9. Um, I, you know, re and remember, people, reviews are opinions. My opinion, it was a 7. 7 is not a bad score. You know, so that's what I gave it. But I wouldn't play another game in this series. Because here's the thing. I'm not one of those micromanaging kind of people. It's like you have to – everything you have to alchemize, every piece of armor, accessory. It's like, I, just give me a shop. Let me buy it. Just put it on. I'll, let me go on my little adventure. I don't want to do all this stuff. <laughs> you know, even when, when it comes to games that you can customize your character, I'm like, I'm just going to pick the stock character. When I was playing, um, you know, Mass Effect, I would just pick the standard Shepard. I'm like, the guy in the box, that's me. You know, I'm not going to go do all this what? other stuff. What? And I'm like one of the few people that does that. Because like, here's the thing. If I, if I, okay, let's just face it. When, I whatever spent 45 character, minutes making my guy because I needed him to get my jawline. He needed nah, see, to I, I can't do that. <laughs> no, I needed it. It was my adventure. Yeah, see, my, I'm like, no, I'm playing as Commander Shepard. I don't want to see my stupid face in a video game. I want to play that guy. He's cool. I'm a loser. I don't want to be <laughs> that guy. This is a role playing. I'm playing the role as Shepard, you know. But it, but it really stems from laziness. I just can't be bothered with that shit. So so after the fact that I have to micromanage so much stuff in this game, it's like. Argh. It's okay. Ninety percent of the the custom faces in Mass Effect look awful anyway. Yeah, yeah. Awful. <laughs> it's hard because you would, you know, you. I sent there spend forty five minutes, and you're like, oh, you can just ahead a little bit. But as soon as your guy opened his mouth, you look like a yes. Dad. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, uh, what I try to do is I try to make him look like 
Jack Shepard from Stargate Atlantis as soon as he opened his mouth. I was like, oh, God. No, I'm just going to pick the guy in the box. Guy in the box. <laughs> you, literally, you, you literally look like a monster. But especially when he did like a profile and you're like, oh, people don't have tattoos <laughs> on their faces. Oh, the God. only time I really did it was um, for Mass Effect 3 because I always play as the male and female. I just picked the stock female. The stock female in Mass Effect 3 doesn't look anything like she does in the box. So I made her look like she does on the box. I'm like, okay, that works for me because <laughs> It was just terrible, but um, yeah, I can't be bothered with that stuff. So this, you know, and the other thing about the game is, and I played two JRPGs in a row that had time management. I'm like, it's a JRPG. I don't want to be rushed. I want to take my time with stuff. Don't push me. I have too much pressure. <laughs> uh, but I, I, you know, it was cool. I liked it for what it was. Um, and I also did a review for Tomb Raider number two, the comic book Gail Simone. I, I it's cool. I, I know some people kind of don't dig it too much, but I kind of like the fact that it it fits the tone of the video game. You know, my question is, Simone. I like. Um, I'm always excited on what she's making. Uh, she had a really great. good run. She had a good run on DC in this uh, series called The Movement. You know, like, and it, they got canceled because she's literally writing about like unknown superheroes in like an unknown town. So it's like, yeah, it's a tough sell. But um, she has a really good way of just character building and just like she's really good at writing dialogue. I've noticed. Yeah, exactly. Like, her speak. It's always like it always seems like a realistic conversation, even it's like, even though it's people with capes or, you know, video game characters speaking to each other, it, it, they seem to have very human conversations, which is always good, because that's, I think that's one of the toughest things in comics, is nailing good dialogue without it just taking over the whole, you know, we're, we're half a page of dialogue, and it's like, well, why have an artist? But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, what, what, what Brian Michael Bendis does, <laughs> it's just dialogue. <laughs> But I, I like that, she, and she captured the spirit of the the, the, the video game, which is great. Um, the only thing is the art kind of bothers me a little bit, because it's very bright and happy. I'm like, mm, doesn't really... It's not a happy game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pretty brutal. My question is, when Tomb Raider 2 comes out, because this is supposed to be canon, are they going to reference this up? Because some... Like, there, a lot of things are changing. It's not just, like, a side event. Like, yeah, okay. I think they'll do what they do in most video games. I have, like, a comic book tied to it. They'll they'll do one or two throwaway lines about something. Like, oh, man, this reminds me about that one time I killed that guy in this mountain. <laughs> I read the book. I know what she's referencing. And most people are like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, and then um, Alyssa put up a review for uh, The Witch and the Hundred Night. Um, she liked it, but a lot of people don't like this game. It, it, you know, I don't I... I don't really know about that. Do you guys um, check this thing out? I any cons or anything? No, I haven't. No, I used to be a big knee, uh, a nice guy. But, like I, I kind of I'm, since like the sky. I love their games, but they, they're just they're. I can't just JRPG. They're just they, too much of a time sink where it's just like I just have no interest in that. Like I, f I feel like the genre itself is really dated, and it's kind of due for an overhaul. But then there's people like there that that's the only game they want to play is they they like turn based. RPG adventure nonsense and just Japanese people with funny hair like art fine great but uh, they stand to that that that's one genre that could use like an update like you know we you know we talk about this VR stuff and how I put up a video for a horror game and people are generally like hey man horror is gonna be really cool on on this VR nonsense where it's like if you want to tie that gimmick to something that could like revitalize a genre. Is you that's know, it, yeah. Like, yeah, this VR stuff is it's gonna bring back horror like in a, in a good way. Like you know, yeah, we'll be and the only problem is all these VR games are gonna look at like a hundred horror games and like ninety percent of them are gonna be terrible. But that ten percent is gonna be really good and that's gonna be the ones people are talking about. Like, can you imagine playing Slender on a, wearing yeah. these stupid headsets and the the idea is you can't turn around, like you can't find so you're just trying to avoid eye contact. Like that's really cool. I, I think I have to clean up my pants now. I, that, that's not <laughs> so. yeah, you're still scared of those kind of games, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it could totally work for that. But um, I don't know. I mean, JRPGs and VR. I no, don't know. I don't know. there's some games that just won't work. Like, yeah. I would, I would play a Skyrim just as I'm there, just sitting on my couch, just. <laughs> As a <laughs> just, just like any game that has like a big immersive world that's in first. I'm like, I'd right, try it. Like, this would be fun. Yeah, that actually makes sense. You know. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move over to some news. Oh, God, this one. So The Last of Us is supposed to be coming out for the PS4. This is one of those things that's kind of like uh, this was going to happen, but at the same time, I personally don't think there should be this shouldn't happen. I'm like, I like the experience I had on PS3. It was complete. Why do we need another one? I, I mean, it's the same thing. Well, this is the Tomb Raider argument. Where yeah, it is. Like, do we you really play, you know, well, if, if you didn't play Last of Us, you know what? The better version will obviously be the PS4 version. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, for those that have played it, I'm like, 
you guys played it. I mean, do you really want to replay that just with fancier graphics? I, I think it's just I think it's just more of an incentive for people that haven't jumped onto the next gen yet. Just as another like, oh, you know, uh, you know, even you know, especially since there won't be backwards compatibility like through the disc, that you know, it's just another nice incentive. Like, oh, hey, you know, if you get a PS4, you can go back and play Last of Us or you know whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed Tomb Raider, but I, you know, I bought it pretty cheap and stuff. But I'm like, and I like the Last of Us too, but I don't know if I want to. You know, go back. I don't know. I, I, to me, it was like let the PS3 have it, that game. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being idealistic about it. You know, I think if it, I think if it looks good and I'm in like a Tomb Raider mood, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe play the HD remake. But I'm in I'm in no rush for it. I enjoyed the game, and I'll be the same thing with Last of Us. I mean, if if it's if I see it or if I see it used in a store, I'm like ah, maybe I'll play through it again in a weekend because Last of Us is one of those games I will probably play through again at some point in the future. Yeah, same. Like you know, sometimes you just get those. You get a free weekend. You're like. Ah, fuck it, I want to play Last of Us. And, you know, if you have your next-gen system, like, oh, yeah, they made, like, a better-looking version of this. You might just pick that up. Yeah, I guess that's a good excuse. Like, I want to play it again, but I want to play it kind of differently. Mm-hmm. Play this. I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I actually finished that entire game in a weekend because that's how gripping it was. It's like, I can't stop playing this. And it was, like, it was interesting because I couldn't put it down, but at the same time, I wanted to put it down because it was yeah, just so stressful. I, I, I put it down because at some point I was like, if you finish this game, you're going to kill yourself, George. And I was just like... I. And it was, it's too. It, it's like so. It's it was stressful playing that game. It you know really I mean? was. It really was. Yeah. Bummed out. Like you're stressed out and you're bummed out and you're like, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, like, yeah you're, you're totally right about that. But I'm like, but this is so good. I gotta keep going. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and this is still a rumor, right? It hasn't been confirmed or anything. There have been like you know. It's it's been very strongly like you know. Not officially confirmed, but like they're, they're like showed up on like an online retail sites in like Italy. Yeah, I think I think at this point, I, like I don't know. <laughs> I think Sony's like there may be Last of Us on PS4. Wink, like kind of you know that's sort of thing is basically so. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it'll be cool. Yeah, we'll see. I'll be a good game to drop during the summer. Now that I think about it, you know, it's like hey, there's something coming out during the summer. Drop this, you know. And the original one came out during the summer too, kind of. Yeah, it was last last June. Came out during E3. During E3, oh my god. Yeah, oh, dude, that was ridiculous. I never heard so many people saying, I want to get out of E3 so I can play Last of Us. Like, yeah. I'm working there. Yeah, and, and uh, when I got back home from E3, it was like, I'm too tired to play video games right now. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, so Phil Spencer is now the head of you know the Xbox division and stuff. Um, he, he's an interesting character because he looks like Vince Vaughn. He looks like a frat boy kind of dude with the you know, kind of squinty eyes and stuff. <laughs> but he says that he wants to focus more on games now, which is something a lot of people have wanted from Xbox now because you know we, we all seen that. You know, reveal for Xbox One where it's just TV, 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 TV. It's like, okay, now you're gonna focus on games. Good. Um, what do you guys think about this? Um, I, I, I like Phil Spencer. I mean, yeah, I like him. He's no Jack Trenton or uh, Shuhei, but <laughs> the best Microsoft has right now, as far as just someone who's you know good on camera and is likable. I I can't tell if he's likable. I feel like he might be. Yeah, I, I have feel like a thing he might about be him. Good looking to be likable, like, <laughs> like you, know, you know what I mean. Like one of those good looking car sales guys, where he's like, you know what? I, I feel like you're lying to me, just because you, you, good looking people don't normally talk to me like that. So I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna be wary in everything you say, Mister uh, Mister Spencer. <laughs> yeah, he, he has like, that look about him, doesn't he? <laughs> I like that. You know, I I do like the refocusing on games or. You know, I don't know if there was a lack thereof focus on games. I know there was the messaging seemed like what 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 does Microsoft want? Like we yeah. just we didn't know what they were up to, but you know, great. I don't know. He's you know he's been around. He's a Microsoft veteran. He knows what the console's about, and yeah, it could it could be used. I mean, it's one of those time you know time will tell. It would have been great if just Jack Trenton showed up and was like, I'm the head of Xbox. That would be insane. Could you imagine N4G if when that happens? Oh my god. That and then people are like, no, no, he's just there to tank the. He's gonna tank the Xbox on purpose because he's. A, I'm like, no. Oh god! I can see the rapid conspiracies going on right now. It's like, no, no, he's there as like a, a Sony double agent. And I'm like, what? What are you guys? Doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! It's like, why are you theorizing about this stuff? Play your. That's the other thing I kind of bothers me. It's a little bit off track. It's like a lot of these guys. They go on Infogy. They go into comments. They go crazy. It's like, 
when do you get to play video games? So these games that you talk about all day, when do you play them? <laughs> I'm just imagining that room that has, like, you know, with the little pins and the strings going across, and there's one guy just connecting all the dots about, like, you know, the gaming journalist Illuminati, when he's like, well, George hated Resident Evil, but he'd like Street Fighter because he got money from this guy who used to work at Capcom, and, you know, and it turns out it was like, oh! <gasps> Oh yes, funding everything, and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's when you get the that's when they get the knock in the door, and it's the Microsoft secret police just like you know putting two in the chest and one in the face, and just <laughs> that was too much. Well, these conspiracy theories, Ryan. Thoughts? <laughs> no, I I don't know if I can follow up with what Ryan said. Yeah, that, that was, was perfect. Too, <laughs> that was too good. Yeah, <laughs> insane ranting. <laughs> that's why people like the shot cast, man. That's what it's all about. Um, okay, moving on. This was funny. Um, so Square Enix is all like, hey, Bravely Default did pretty well. We should make more JRPGs that people like. It's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Hey, also, in breaking news, people in France speak French. What? <laughs> Maybe we don't need to Western our games. Maybe we just need to make good games that people will follow. Duh! Duh! <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, that's great. They're they're shifting their focus to making, you know, they they call it heavy RPGs. I don't know what's a, what's a light RPG. <laughs> you know what? That was that's what made them rich. I mean, mm -hmm. remember back in the day we were talking about our you know our origin story. Remember Square? All they were known for was great art JRPGs. Every JRPG popped out. And by the way, in those days they didn't call them JRPGs. They just called them RPGs. Mm -hmm. Every every one of them. They were, it was. Oh cool. yeah, because then then when kind of like Western RPGs came out, people were like, oh okay. Games could not, you know, RPGs could not be boring. This is good. Okay, cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. I remember um, that was when that was when that whole shifted focus, and it kind of came. You know, I always attribute like Star Wars: The Old Republic as a Western RPG, or like Elder Scrolls too. Yeah, know. or Elder Scrolls, where it's like, oh, you know, we don't have to be, we don't have to have our gun to our head and follow a narrative. We can just kind of play a game any way we want, and they kind of introduced this idea of like open-ended gameplay and freedom in like character design. And, you know, in most RPGs, you don't customize the way your character looks. And it's like, yeah, oh, wow. I, 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 I was like, hey, I'm not customizing. It turns out everyone except Tony likes to put themselves in a game. <laughs> <laughs> your character creators. You know, that's it. And, and I think that that's the, that's the shift. But, you know, people still love JRPGs. Some people love having a linear narrative. And I'm not saying in that in, like, a negative way. It's just, no, some people like their stories. Yeah, having linear is not a pejorative, people. No, some people like knowing, like, all right, I'm going to move plot point, plot point, plot point, plot point. Like, I don't need to sit around and just, like, hmm, do I go, I can go here, 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 here. And you know what? You end up standing in one spot for 20 minutes. And... Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, we'll see what they, what they do with it. I'm personally happy. I'm like, good. I, I would love the old Square. Remember when they were called Square? I would love that to be back. But, you know, it's just funny. It was like, they were some old, they were some, old, old Enix. Give me old Enix, too. The yeah, Star Ocean too. But yeah, I remember they were like, uh, we were surprised by how well um, Spray the Default did. Why were you surprised? It was a really good game. That That's all you need. You know, you know what I, I think because it probably didn't cost them as much as say like a Final Fantasy thirteen or a Tomb Raider. That's true. Where it's like, oh look, we don't have to spend ten million dollars to make a game that sells well. Yeah, I, I didn't get like some of the vitriol that like Final Fantasy thirteen did or some of the more recent games, you know, the last couple of years. So you want to know why? Because they didn't call it Final Fantasy. That too. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's all it takes. They can literally just stop calling games Final Fantasy and people will give them a shot because there's this this. There's this bar of there's this expectation for Final Fantasy these days that just they can never hit again. Even yeah, I agree. Final Fantasy game is the great. Even if Jesus himself floated down on a Vespa, <laughs> on a Vespa, <laughs> make the next Final Fantasy, like in Fully Cooly when the girl drove down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, That's great. <laughs> big scarf, and he's like, "I'm gonna make the next JRPG, Final Fantasy." You know what? People would people would yell at him. People are like you're doing it wrong, Jesus. I I'm mad at you. Like, <laughs> even even if it was the Final Fantasy VII HD remake that everyone's been wanting for so long, <laughs> you know what? it'd be wrong. It'd totally be wrong. You'd be like, I like the other one better. You know what? It looks too pretty. I like I like my game. Yeah, you can't win with that. And who the game should be watercolor? Oh no, it should be shell shaded. Like a oh, fuck you. All right, you're not making the game. All right? <laughs> Is this the same guy that does all the conspiracy theories that you talked about yes. earlier? Like the same guy. <laughs> No, man. They're gonna, you know, they they want to make a Final Fantasy VII remake, but the thing is, the car industry won't let them because they sided with the electric, and <laughs> they're against it. And they said, "Yo, we know how to hurt them. We're we're gonna make them not make Final Fantasy VII remake." I don't, I don't know. I don't. It, it, and somehow they, they'll twist it to the NRA won't let them make Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> 
And why did you guys tell me that my name was Dual Shockers this entire time? I just realized that. Like, what the fuck? I didn't do that on purpose. Like the time you did the Shockcast with a black screen. I was like, oh, no, I that, was, that was not intentional. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have fun around here. Um, yeah, but the funny thing is, you, you mentioned that it's like it's not called Final Fantasy. That's why I liked it. But everybody mentioned Final Fantasy when they talk about Bravely Default. Like, this is the Final Fantasy game I want. It was a Final Fantasy game. Just didn't call it that. And you know what? It was no pressure, and it was great. Yeah, hell, it's, it's but, but guys, you don't you don't want a Final Fantasy, a Final Fantasy Seven remake. You you just don't because you know what? It'll, I don't. I don't. You don't because you want to know why? It'll when you because when you play the Final Fantasy remake, you'll be like, oh my god, Final Fantasy Seven really wasn't that great. Oh. <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry. You talk about one of the worst stories ever. Oh my god, they killed Eris. I'm gonna go snowboard. I'm like, wait, what? That's not how you grieve. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, they kill off a character who I don't even li- like. I didn't even like her. Like they just yeah. manu- they just manufacture feelings for. Her. I was like, no. I'm like, I I chose Tifa at the goal. Yeah, I like Tifa. I'm like, I like her. You know, I don't care about Eris. Fun. The other one was boring. All she did was pick flowers and just like stare at the stare at the ceiling. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, like, I have a confession to make. I used to. Support. <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to watch my, my friend play Final Fantasy VII on the PS1, but I didn't own it. So I actually did not get to play it myself until 2008. <laughs> um, and that was the year, uh, no, 2009, that was the year um, Fallout 3 came out. So I played Fallout 3, I'm like, this is supposed to be the greatest RPG ever, this game sucks. And I played Final Fantasy VII. Now I get why everyone hypes this game, this is fucking amazing. I'm like, give me the old game over this new shit, fuck this shit. You're nuts. <laughs> I'm saying it's not great. Like, there's no explanation to why Sephiroth wants to summon a meteor. In, you know, because like, he's evil. That's why. Not good. That's not good anymore. It's like, oh, but then, you know, they did experiments on his Genova and his mom. And just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, mean, I, I <laughs> went right into it, man. I was like, this and then, is and then, and then, oh, I've got no memory, man. I'm, I'm impersonating my best friend, Zach, who I got killed. And I was just like, I'm like, going to play this Zach guy. This Zach guy seems way more interesting. Direct all your hate mail to George. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it. I will more than happy to tell you why Final Fantasy VII is awful. Oh, I mean, at the time you played it, and it was just like, oh my, you know, it was your first... It was, I played it when I was 29 years old, and I fucking loved it. <laughs> you're insane. You're, you're, you are a crazy person. But no, it was, you know, it was the introduction of, like, you know, the epic RPG. Yeah. Which was like, you know, no one has seen this before, and no one, you know, it's been out for a while. You know, it's, it's been out, and like, they've existed, but not on this, like, grand scale, because you're talking about, like, you know, full motion video. These, you know, this game was like three discs long because it was packed with like these gorgeous cutscenes, and you're like, yeah. wow, this is. I didn't know video games can do this or be like at least this cinematic or the fully rendered 3D backgrounds. Like, the game itself was, you know, it, at the time looked amazing, and you're like, yeah, that was one of the best of games ever. I was like, holy shit, like, this is, the, yeah. it was super intense, and you're like, wow, this is really cool. And so you, you, you know, you were just kind of along for the ride. So you were willing to pull up with like a lot of the nonsense. But there's a good eight to ten hour gap where the game doesn't do. You don't do. You you don't do anything. You go to a whole. You go. You hang out in a hotel resort for three hours for really no reason. Yeah, the magic of JRPGs back in the day is just all this fluff, you know. And the snowboarding, I think, happened before. Did it? I don't know. I thought it was after. <laughs> no, but I think you can go back if you want, you know. I, I remember I went crazy like, am I got the black chocobo and everything. You know, maybe that's how I agree. Maybe she died and I was like, I, I need to go back to snowboard. I, I need, yeah, guys, like, I need time, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I, was it the gold chocobo that when I could just go everywhere, I got that, I got all so the I got nice around with mime, so don't, you know, some people are like, oh, he probably never played. No, I played it, I got level 99, I got my, you know, I got my chocobo and did my mime for Knights of the Round Table to kill all the weapons, so fuck you, I beat Ruby Weapon. <laughs> so I'm I'm more than qualified to criticize the game, all right? Yes. <laughs> despite me going like, oh, what a terrible game. I did put in like 300 hours. Oh, he never played it, though, man. He played and played. He was paid stuck. by Microsoft to say yeah. that. Paid by Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he made like Fusion Frenzy. What do you think Fusion Frenzy? Was that good, George? Like, no, Fusion Frenzy was terrible. I will admit that. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, this came out today. Um... So some German site posted a PC video of Watch Dogs, you know, the actual PC version. Remember a couple weeks ago when I said this game won't look as good as the E3 demo on PC? I was right. <laughs> it looks better than the console was. It doesn't look as good as that original demo because it's the actual game. It looks beautiful, but it doesn't look... Good. And are they saying this is from a dev kit or just... Hey, because... Yeah, they were like, hey, look, Ubisoft sent us this. And I'm like, is this April Fool's? But no, apparently it's legit. You know? I... 
like I unless Ubisoft confirms it says like, hey, look, that wasn't a final build, or you know, I don't. Yeah. You, know, you know what? You might be right about that. Maybe it isn't final build. Maybe that's why it doesn't look like crazy. Yeah. Like, so I don't. I don't know. I. I. I don't. It, you know, questionable German sites posting videos of AAA titles that, first of all, aren't. It's not even golden. Games aren't yeah. even. The game's not even close to finish, so it's not like there'd be a copy floating around. Yeah, exactly. That's why I want to just talk about it briefly on the Shotcast. I didn't. Want, I wasn't going to post that as news because uh, who the fuck knows? It's, it's 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 not news. It's like the one guy in the comments yeah. saying, "I'm playing. Look, pictures of. Uh, I have pictures of Watch Dogs." I'm like, dude, really? You? I clearly see the watermark for. Yeah, like, I, I still know. maintain that. <laughs> yeah, I still maintain that the PC version is not going to look as good as that E3. That E3 demo was dressed up nicely. You know how like when they have like com- when these commercials they dress up the burger to look all nice and stuff. Yes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> they do at press events. They dress yeah. up. Like, you get. I don't know, people sound, you know, it's like the same Dark Souls argument. They took the lighting, it's not the same lighting and shadowing thing. And I was like, well, yeah, because we just wanted to show you what the game roughly looks like. We took the shadowing up because the game would be like five frames a second. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We want you to play this game, people. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. I mean, it's coming next month, isn't it? End of next month? Uh, yeah, I think the end of May. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see about that. I'm still, I'm not as excited for it as I used to be, not because of the graphics. I'm just kind of, it's just, when was it announced? Like two or three years ago? Yeah, I was, I'm, burned, I'm burned out on it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that point. Like, I'm kind of in media blackout mode on Watch Dogs. Like, uh, yeah, you know, I'll get it and yeah, and I'll play it, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I've reached that point. I'm like, okay, uh, cool, whatever, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not willing to commit murder for the game or something. I'm not that like jazzed about it. Like, I, I'll wait. I can wait on it. It's no big deal. Exactly. Right. What about you? What do you think about Watch Dogs? Are you excited yeah. for it? I, I mean, I was. Like, at first, when they first announced it, I thought it looked really cool and everything. I mean, all the delays and all, like, the all the stuff we're talking about now, about, like, the graphic downgrades and all that, like, kind of has me a little hesitant on it. Um, yeah. So I'm just kind of waiting. I'm waiting it out, you know, until it releases. and what, Like, once, once the finished product is out and I can see what it looks like, mm-hmm. you know, that's, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it, but, you know, I have to wait and see. I'm probably, I wouldn't get it on a last, you know, because I can only get it for a PS3 or 360, which I would not do because it'll probably look awful on those, so. Oh, man, yeah, you don't want that. Yeah. Titanfall's yeah. next week on 360, so I kind of can't wait to see what that looks like. <laughs> Yep. Oh, that should be cool. Is there any way you could actually like play it, George? So you could do like a comparison or something. That would be. Pretty I can. Cool. I have capture equipment. Yeah, I, can, I have capture equipment. Like, I mean, I yeah. got it with. Uh, it's just sort of a matter of me just plugging in the XO. I'd, I'd have to do the same exact thing on both systems, but yeah, I can probably yeah. swing it. I'll fr- I can figure something out. See yeah, it'd be cool. And you're gonna buy it, right? Oh, oh you, I have to buy it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, you didn't pay for the copy. You. Reviewed. I mean, if I got a review copy, I'd be more than happy to play. That but why cool. would I? Why would I want to play the, literally the same exact game, like the just I don't know, I mean, inferior version with like no grunts? Or actually, we don't know if there if there are no grunts in this, or we don't know I mean, what's not in it. <laughs> you might get. I got three copies of Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag, so maybe you'll look out and you know. <laughs> <laughs> they go to show up, and I'm like, why do I have these three sixty copies? <laughs> All right, that's the show, guys. So, uh, what have we been playing this week, Ryan? What have you been playing? Um, so, actually, for the site, uh, actually, this this weekend I'm playing a lot. Um, so, for the site, I'm reviewing Ragnarok Odyssey Ace uh, on PlayStation Vita. Um, you know, which is cool because I don't usually play RPGs very often, just because kind of like what Jorge said, like the grinding and all kind of gets to me. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've been playing a lot of backlog stuff. Uh, so I played through Far Cry Three Blood Dragon on 360. Yes, I and, love that uh, game, man. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I finally I've had it for a while and I just never got around to it. And then I finally played through it and I I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was um, great. So I played through that. I also finished Bastion because I hadn't got around to finishing that. So I finished that. Great. And. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I only had like a couple levels left, so I decided to try and finish it off. Um, and then actually, meeting the, uh, how cool was it meeting the narrator at the award show for Bastion? Yeah, when I thought about that, I was like, yeah, I bet <laughs> that guy was awesome. So, and then um, other than that, oh, I started Far Cry Three, regular Far Cry Three, um, and that game is fun. Like, I just, I really want to go back and play more, uh, even though I probably won't have time tonight. But uh, it's really fun so far. Awesome, George. Yep. Uh, oh, actually, got- oh. Oh, you got one more? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, I did just get this right before we started recording, so I'm oh. going uh, to start playing it probably this week or you know later on. But For you guys listening, that was Final Fantasy XX 2 HD for the Vita. Yep, yeah. I got the Vita version, so, yep. <laughs> I'm hanging myself. <laughs> I, if te- like, I've always wanted to play 10, and I just never got around to playing it on PS2, so, and I never played it. I never played ten two, so uh, that would be interesting. But yes, you're in for a treat. I love ten. That was great. Ten two is not 
not bad. Ten, yeah, ten two is not. Yeah, it's not that bad. Read machine yeah. editorial on it. <laughs> George, what about you? What are you playing? Um, I, I'm actually busy this week. I'm doing a lot of review stuff. I've got uh, Dynasty Warriors Extreme. Oh boy, I, you must be loving that fucking game, man. I'm, I'm an old school Dynasty Warriors fan, <laughs> so uh, my I'm actually working on my review, so that should be up in the next day or so. And I also got Deception Four Blood Ties, which is also kind of a fun game by uh, Tim Kokoe. That's the one where you're running around laying traps for people. You're a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's heroes trying to invade your castle or something. I don't know. It's really... The story itself is really dumb. You're doing it for just these ridiculous traps. So my favorite has been like putting a banana peel that leads him into a bear trap, into a swinging axe! <laughs> into an Iron Maiden! And I'm like, alright, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll have that review probably by the end of the week. And then also uh, our lovely editor, Joel, sent me a... I'm, I will be reviewing uh, Connect Sports Rivals. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, A, I need to figure out... I need to make six... Give me feet. space, baby. <laughs> feet. So I might have to just take my bed and put it up against the wall in order to play it. So I'm going to I'm gonna do a review for that, but I won't be up until next week because uh, of the embargo. I'm kind of curious because it's supposed to like look at my face and then make an avatar based on my... On this, how is it gonna capture that Georgeness? It's impossible. I'm this beard. I need. I need to know the the quality of the beard in that game will determine the quality. <laughs> of the game. I'm, I'm I give this game a two because it couldn't capture the beard of the my beard. Right, right. Fuck. But yeah, there's like rock climbing and jet skiing, and uh, I think I might play some of that tonight just to just to kind of giggle a little bit. But uh, I'll see. Yeah, I'll play around with it. I might uh, capture some video for it and see. Looks like hopefully it'll be a little solo of me pretending to jet ski or climb a mountain. <laughs> but, That'd be hilarious, man. But yeah, it's it's me playing games I would probably not normally play unless you... You are reviewing it. Let's just yeah, be yeah. <laughs> I'm like dependent on it. Like, and you know what? And, you know, and they're, they don't seem all that bad. Like, yeah. Um, as for myself, I'm waiting, I'm I'm in for Dynasty Warriors. Is what yeah, I'm yeah, I know that's the one you're really digging. Um, I'm, I'm not reviewing anything right now, so I'm playing... A game of catch up with my DVR. I'm trying to clean that baby out because I haven't watched TV in like weeks. I've been playing and reviewing so many games, so now I'm just catching up on everything. Um, you've, got, you've got Arrow, Agents of Shield. Oh um, my God, so much stuff. Dead. You've got uh, Rain, uh, Heart of Dixie. Uh, <laughs> I don't watch any of that shit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm that's, that's, yeah. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, you got that Game of Thrones uh, Season 4 premiere to look forward to this Ooh, Sunday. So you I gotta, can't wait for that game. Yeah, I'm actually going to a bar. That's doing a premiere night, and we're gonna have Game of Thrones themed food and trivia. And that's awesome. Feast of Thrones. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna get super drunk, and I'm gonna be like, and then, and then, and then it turns out to be the Red Wedding, and you know, oh, everything goes oh wrong. sobbing and just <laughs> forming out of the place. Like, I've had it. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that. So yeah, I'm doing that. I'm trying to get Paper Trail on Infamous to work. This shit just doesn't work. It's like. Did you make a profile? No, you didn't. Try again. It's like, come on, I want to play the extra stuff. So, and I think I got to put in a code now, but I don't know how to get the code. And I'm asking people, they're like, oh, just wait for a guy, dude. It's like, you're helpful, you know. Um, and I'm trying to get the final two trophies in Metal Gear. I got, I got to get everything. Um, I got to get S rank and every mission. I've done half of them and unlock all trials. Um, I'm still loving that game. It's really fun, dude. Um, I, I actually, usually go back to it and just go like, I'm just gonna shoot everyone this time around, and it's great. Like, you just get into a big gunfight. Yeah, it'd be, great if there, it'd be great if there's a trophy that you can't get until Fan of Pain comes out. Like, oh somebody. my god, yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I thought there was that. I think there was that thing where you. I thought there was one trophy you couldn't get. No, the platinum trophy, you mean? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's funny because um, my friend sent me a video. Or actually, he put it up on Facebook of him beating um, the main mission in ten minutes. So then I replicated it and I beat it in around eleven minutes. So I'm like, pretty cool. But you know how long it takes you to get to that point? You have to play it a lot, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm Metal Gear, man, I, I'm I'm still loving it. it. But the thing is, every time I play, I'm like, oh, I want the Phantom Pain now. Yeah, that's why I'm 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 kind of you know I I, I think I did as much as I was gonna do it, and now I'm just gonna forget about it. And then hopefully closer to when like Phantom Pain comes out, I was like, oh good, now I can actually like I'll replay Ground Zeroes a bunch of times and kind of really yeah. get to, like I'll, I'll play like I'll play Peace Walker then Ground Zeroes and really get myself amped up for it. Did you listen to all of Chico's tapes? I heard them all back to back. Yeah, they're, they're terrible. Oh shit, dude! I'm like, wow. Especially tape four. I'm like, 
Wow. Yeah, they're awful. They're it's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life, and it's super depressed and totally like shifts the tone of the game. Where it's just like it does not feel like a when you hear those tapes, you're like, this is not a Metal Gear game. This is this is getting weird because I was always comfortable with being like this weird military fantasy type game. Yeah. But when you when when you start doing like torture and rape and and just more torture, it's kind of like. It's just getting a little too real. Like it, it, it doesn't quite know where it is, where it wants to be tonally, because you still have like Kaz really. Uh, what's that line he says at the very end? Where he's oh, like, they, it was like they, they tricked us or something. The way he delivered that was so stupid. Yeah, he, he essentially said something. Like, I can't believe yeah. they double dog dare us or something. Yeah, I was like, what? It's like they duped us. It's like, dude, really? <laughs> that was so ridiculous. And the thing is, okay, and I, this is in the back of my mind. I'm like. You know, when I was playing Peace Walker, I did not imagine that Chico and Pass would have to go through this. This is horrible. I did not imagine that. And a lot of people are, like, kind of defending it when I'm like, no, you can't really def- – like, I, like, to me, I think it's bad writing because it's almost, like, rewarding. This is your reward for finding these secret tapes is we're going to make you listen and sit through this horrible scene of a minor forced to have sex with someone who's being tortured. And it's like yeah. – I was like, wait, this is what I get for finding your secret tape? <laughs> Dima, like, that's now, now, now I need some booze, man. If this was going to happen, I would have not got that fucking tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although I, I personally don't think that's bad writing. The line that Cass said, that's bad writing. And bad no, delivery. I, I think Metal Gears always suffer from bad writing. And I think I don't, and maybe it's just like a loss in translation type thing. Yeah. I, I think some of the kind of like more dramatic beats just don't quite have the effect that's intended. Yeah, I wonder if that's the effect of, and I'm not trying to be controversial, it's because Kojima's the director of this. You think maybe he just doesn't realize that because of the language? You know, like, oh, that doesn't sound right. You know? No, no, because I don't, I, 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 like I said, I feel it's more of like a tonal thing. You think so? And like I said, the writing, and like just the way they fit that particular scene didn't make sense to me. Because yeah. really, like, in, you know, like, in the, like, rape and torture has always been kind of implied in Metal Gear. Like, Metal Gear, you know, Metal Gear 3, you got, you know, you, you got tortured. And, like, all the nasty stuff, you didn't really see it. You can kind of kind of picture it. But you you were never given the graphic detail of everything. You know, you were in, like, in, in some ways, it's more horrible to kind of, like, imagine what was happening. And instead of just kind of being, like, I felt like it was almost like lazy writing to be told exactly what was going on, like... I would rather just hear a scream or something and just be like, what the fuck is going on? And to me, that's a little bit more suspenseful, and that leaves with the tone, because then Metal Gear's always kind of had, like, this goofy kind of undertone to it, which I always appreciate. And, you know, that was what, like, kind of, like, Revengeance just took that goofy undertone and just said, we're just going to make this the main game. Like, we're just going to yeah. skip this, like, bullshit that has its head up his own ass. Like, we don't need this serious war as hell type nonsense. We want to cut robots in half. Yeah, right. Oh, man. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and I said that in my review. I'm like, you know, most Metal Gear games... Totally, they've been PG-13. This is straight up R. I'm like, wow, yeah. that's pretty heavy, man. I mean, but we'll see if the main game is... Because, I mean, you saw the trailer. That, that fucking girl's getting torched. She's getting, like, shocked and stuff. I'm like, yeah, this is yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I feel like it's going to be more to come, and I don't feel like it... I don't, and I, don't, I just don't think it handles those topics, like, very gracefully or... In a yeah, way. I could agree with that. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it just feels very ham-fisted. You know what I mean? Yeah. You kind of have to I film... how horrible the... this is. Like, I, I know how horrible war is. Like, you don't have to... You don't have to be that vivid. It's like you know, give me, give me some credit. I'm I'm an, I'm an intelligent adult. I can I can figure this out on my own. Like you're like, no, no, she was raped. I'm like, I get. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, like um, you're making this for adults. You're talking down to them. Yeah, like the bombs in her vagina. Like wh- what? Like you can kind of figure that. It goes no, it's somewhere else. I'm like. I didn't need that. Like, I'm pretty there's sure. Only, there's only two holes yeah. down there. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. Big Boss could figure that out. Like, yeah. like he, I'm pretty sure he thought that out. He didn't need like, no, 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 no. Somewhere else. <laughs> Get it? Like, no. Come on. Like, oh man. Come on, Kojima. All right, that, that's our weekly Metal Gear Solid talk <laughs> on the Shockcast. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll be back next week. As always, I was joined by Ryan Meisler. The joke's on you. I don't know. I was trying to come up with some April Fool's <laughs> thing, but I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> so I did George Jimenez. If you don't see me next week, that's because the Microsoft Secret release came onto my plan. They figured it out. I uncovered the details. I connected the dots. I followed the money. And it turns <laughs> out Jack Trenton has been working for Ouya this whole time.
There you go. It, the, the cover's been blown. Sorry. All right, guys, and I was Tony Polanco, as always. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Hashtag follow the money.